Hello everyone, Sean Reynolds here. Hope you guys are having a blessed day. Listen, what does it mean to be a Jew? I'm gonna to try to break this down for you as quickly as possible. And you know me, quick means probably a 30 minute video, but here goes. All right, so, whew, when we, okay. The best way to understand um, what it means to be a Jew, all right, we have to understand that the entire Bible, okay, the Old Testament all the way leading to and throughout the New Testament is really a genealogy. It's a genealogy of two, listen to me, two separate families, okay? Um, Adam and Eve, okay, I'm not going to get into the specific numbers, that don't really matter, but Adam and Eve, okay, is the descendants, the forefathers, uh, as, as you may, of the white race, okay? When I say white, I'm not just saying Anglo-Saxons, okay? I'm saying uh, the European, just the white race. Uh, some, uh, also Russians, they qualify, you know what I mean? Uh, there's more than just uh, Anglo-Saxons who qualify to be the white race from Adam and Eve, okay? Now, as I wanna get into, there's a difference between the general white race now, like the Europeans in general, or the, the Russians in general, and the 12 tribes of Israel because the 12 tribes of Israel originated f from these white race, race slash races, sub races, whatever. Um, but they all descended from Adam and Eve. That's the thing I wanna, I want you to understand. Here's a question. Do you believe in evolution? Yes or no? What's your answer? Okay. If you're a true Christian, you know that evolution is a false theory. That, uh, okay, God created everything the way it is. There is such thing as adapting to your environment. Well, that's something completely different. I'm not talking about that. When it comes to the different races of people that we see on the planet, we, we can easily observe five or six different races, okay? God created each race of people exactly as they are. Over the years, the races have gone and mixed with each other, and that's why we have so many sub races and that's why it's you know just about everyone has mixture of races in them now right but originally god created each race as they are okay i'm talking the white people who originated from adam and eve okay he created the black people africans whatever who originated from their forefather whoever god was the whoever was the first one that god made of them you see uh the Asian people, same thing. The Aborigine people, like in Australia, same thing. And um, there's another race, the Canaanites. Now, this is where it gets interesting. <sighs> uh, so I hope you understand that we did not all evolve from Adam and Eve, okay? God created each race as we are. Um, the Bible is, if you study hermeneutics and apologetics and you go and compare all the many scriptures all throughout the Bible, it's it, it doesn't make it very clear on this aspect. I believe at one time it did, but I believe that because of human intervention over the years, okay, they've made it to where this, this is not a clear, defined thing. But you have to understand that uh, not only does common sense and science prove this, right? Science has proven to us that we didn't all just evolve from one race. That's utterly impossible. Especially in, if, we're, if they're gonna say we've only been here however many thousands of years, that even adds an, an extra layer of impossibility to it. It couldn't have even happened in that short amount of time, let alone at all. You know, that's what I'm saying. Um, but the Bible, if you understand it and interpret it, and I've written many articles about this, and if I start quoting Bible scriptures here, YouTube will take this video down. I've noticed that too. They're, they're, definitely have an agenda against people like me but go and read my research on facebook i've written articles about this just know that god created each race as we are that's why racism is bullshit okay we should all be proud and happy of our heritage of where we come from and our own color and you know be our race because god created us this way he, he created me a white man he created you whatever you are okay so, now that we have that out of the way, let's get back to Adam and Eve. As I said, they're the forefathers of white people. Now, Adam and Eve, this is another thing that requires a lot of research, but I've written uh, uh, articles on this. 
with, again, Bible scriptures verifying everything. And not just Bible scriptures, but people like me, we look outside the Bible as well. Extra biblical sources. Okay, we look up historical things. Like I've studied all about the, the ancient uh, Egyptians. Okay, I've studied all about all the ancient um, people who, who derived from the, like, the Syria, Turkey, Iraq, Iran region along the Euphrates River, which is a lot of scientists and historians believe is where is the civilization of society. If, if they believe that's where, our, where uh, you know Adam and Eve were uh, originated from, is that area, which may be true. I don't know, but uh, but you know from the Akkadians to the ancient Sumerians to the Hittites, uh, the Canaanites, the Canaanites, all these different tribes of people. Okay. I've studied uh, all their writings, so I've, I've studied much more than just the Holy Bible. But the amazing thing about the Holy Bible is that it actually, there's no contradictions. If you interpret it right, if you interpret the Holy Bible right, and if you interpret what these extra uh, biblical sources are saying, and there's, go and research it, there's, there's many things from, from cave drawings to hieroglyphs to text to like the, the missing books of the Bible, you know, which I've seen in person, by the way. When I was in the army and stationed in uh, South Korea, uh, they had a ex a, like an expedition there where they set up and they let people go in and actually see. Uh, they were it was behind closed glass, but I got to see the the actual Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, and it's and and all the you know the missing books of the Bible. It's amazing, but um, but here's the thing. Okay, all this matters, and there's a reason why throughout the years the these things have become like you know not common knowledge or or they purposely tried to hide it you see there's a reason for that because they've been doctoring history since the beginning and all this ties into what i'm saying so the the holy bible as i said is a genealogy of two families now what two families okay this is what i'm getting to it starts off with adam and eve that's the anglo sax i'm sorry that's the white just the white race i'll just say the whites now, Adam and Eve had two sons at first. They had Cain and they had Abel, okay? This is what I'm saying. You got to go read my research. So don't take my word for it because you, if you haven't heard of this yet and you haven't researched it, you're probably going to laugh and think I'm crazy for saying this. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were tempted and they fell, God said, don't, don't touch of that tree. You know, don't touch that tree. It wasn't the fruit. It wasn't a tree. It's a family tree is what it's talking about. The forbidden fruit was the sin of intercourse. Okay. That Eve and Adam, they had a threesome, had with the serpent, a.k.a. Satan. Now, Satan, as we all know, before he fell, was kicked out of heaven by God. His name was Lucifer. He was God's right-hand angel. Right? Right? So Satan is a fallen angel. So, and, and as we know, angels slash fallen angels, they look a lot like humans. And we're even given examples in Genesis, and I believe in Exodus, where the, the, um, the fallen angels, they were giants, and they went on and they had sex with the, with the human women. It said that they looked at them and saw that they were beautiful, and they went in and had sex with them, and they, they had hybrid offspring which were giants the nephilim okay so that's where all that came from so we know that that's possible okay satan the serpent a fallen angel tempted eve and adam and they had intercourse and eve since it was a threesome she had and this is totally possible too it happens all the not all the time but it, it happens okay where two fathers right uh, the, the eve ended up having twins is what happened and and one of the babies cain was of the seed of Satan, the serpent. And Abel was of the seed of Adam. You get my drift? So if we were to follow through Abel's pure bloodline, that would that would be the pure as God created because that was of, he was created of the union between Adam and Eve. But if we follow the bloodline of Cain, right? This is of a hybrid unholy union because it was of the union between Satan, fallen angel, and Eve. 
So that's that's why from the beginning Cain always hated his brother Abel. He was always jealous, and that's why God was not happy with Cain's offerings. Okay, he he God gave him the choice to not be like uh, his father Satan, but Cain decided to be just like his father Satan. Now what happened? Now uh, Cain, as we all know, went on and killed his brother Abel. So he killed him, and that was Satan's attempt to sever to completely cut off the white the pure white race that would have come from adam and eve you see but god blessed adam and eve with another son called seth okay cain did not kill seth seth went on and seth is the father the forefather of all the white uh, as i said he he just uh, the the anglo-saxons as well as the um the Russians, there's lots of, I can't go into them all, but there's, you see what I'm saying, the white people. Um, and uh, Cain, a lot of people if, don't realize this, but if you look in Genesis, we actually have the the the, uh, the family tree of Cain. Cain went off and married. Who did he marry with? Huh. That's because there were other races of people on the earth at this time. Like I said, God created each race separately, individually, and he placed us all in separate places of the planet. When God banished Cain for killing his brother, Cain went off, and what he did is he traveled to Asia. And he met up with one of the Asian races there, and he started having intercourse with not just one, but many, 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 anyone that he could. And he started forming his own tribes. And eventually, that's where we get the Canaanites, the Canaanites, the Hittites. Uh, the, the, you see what I'm saying? These these tribes that uh, the ancient Sumerians, you see, uh, were all integrated with the Akkadians. Um, so they came from Cain, Cain's descendants. And he, like I said, he went and mixed with the Asians, but then they came back to the Middle East. And that's why we have... Uh, the the formation of like I said the the uh, the Akkadians and the Hittites and the Canaanites that that's when all that started was when he and his tribe that he had created slash tribes travel back but they started mixing and mixing and mixing with anyone they can and so next thing you know we have all these different tribes and they're spreading out and taking over okay this is a true story okay so Seth went on uh, you know was the one that God blessed Adam and Eve with so Seth went on to be the forefather of the pure white you know descendants uh as opposed to cain who is the hybrid okay and so time went on uh, some theologians who accept that adam that i'm sorry that cain actually went on and started these thing these groups of people they will tell you that all oh, he and all of his descendants they were all wiped out during the flood of noah okay that's utterly not true Number one, the Bible tells us this because after the flood of Noah, who do we see described multiple times? We see the Canaanites described multiple, multiple times. In fact, if we go all the way down to when Jesus Christ was here 2,000 years ago, he, he spent his whole ministry arguing and debating with these Pharisees and scribes. Who were the Pharisees and scribes? Go look it up. The Canaanites, the Canaanites, the, the, the descendants of Cain. Okay. That's why Jesus Christ, go read the Bible. He said, you know, you are not of my flock. You don't understand my, you don't hear my voice because uh, my father is not your father. He even called them seeds of Satan by word. Go read it. Uh, holy cow, there's so much evidence. The, the, it's the same group of people. They did not get wiped out during the flood of Noah. The flood of Noah was a regional flood. It was not an earthwide flood, okay? Yes, a lot of the Nephilim and hybrid things that were existence during that time were wiped out, but not everyone on the earth was wiped out. And here's proof. If everyone on the planet, if this was a global flood and everyone on the planet except for Adam and his, I'm sorry, except for Noah and his family were wiped out, we would only have white people on the planet today because Noah and his descendants, they were descended from Seth, right? So they were of the race of Seth, the white race, the same as Adam and Eve, okay? So, Adam, I'm sorry, Noah did not have one son of each race. No, that's, holy cow. When has that ever happened? Why would that ever happen? God did not make that, that's not how that works. That's the same as believing in evolution, my friends. So, okay, the fact that we have other races on the, the earth today besides just the white race proves that the world, the, the flood of Noah was not a global flood, it was a regional flood. 
And not just that, but we have writings from all these different societies all over, all over the world, all these civilizations all over the world who actually wrote about the flood of Noah happening and how they survived the flood of Noah or how they witnessed it or all that, these things. Come on now. If only Noah and his family survived, there wouldn't be these other, uh, these countless accounts all over the world of, of other people surviving this flood. Do you see what I'm saying now? All right, so it was a regional flood. Cain and his descendants survived, just like we know that Seth, Seth's descendants survived through Noah and his three sons and their three wives, okay? And so we go on down the line. Um, when Abraham is born, Abraham is a descendant of Noah, who is a descendant of Seth, who is a descendant of Adam and Eve. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, okay? All the same race, the same exact family tree. Jacob gives birth. He has 12 sons, okay? God appoints the 12 sons of Jacob as the, the 12 tribes of Israel, they and their ancestors. And God promises that he will bless them with an eternal heritage. Now, I want to say on that note, this earth, we see all throughout the Bible, this earth, including Jerusalem, Israel, is not eternal. It's not going to be here forever. And, and Revelation describes how on the seventh trump, when Jesus Christ returns, the material earth is destroyed. You see, it's not an eternal, this, this earth is not our home, in other words. So when God promised that the true Israelites would have an eternal heritage, he's not talking about Israel. That was a temporary deal. That's come and gone. Now the people living in Israel are the Canaanites pretending to be the true Israelites. And that's the Antichrist agenda that God warned us about in his Bible, in his holy word. But the, um, uh, the, our heritage, eternal heritage, is New Jerusalem, which, if you read in Revelation, comes, returns when Jesus Christ returns on that seventh trump. He brings New Jerusalem down with him. And the material to spiritual transformation occurs. And New Jerusalem is our new home, eternal home. That's our eternal heritage, not the material Jerusalem that's on the earth now. Our eternal heritage that God promised us from the beginning is New Jerusalem. And, you know, like I said, it started off, God promised that it would be uh, Israel, you know, in the Middle East on earth. And But because of the sins, if you read, and I've written many articles about this, the Israelites continued to sin, and God continued to crank down and, and, and throw more and more rules on them. And that's what happened. They just, they kept sinning. They kept sinning until eventually God, and I, I've proven this in scripture. God handed both tribe, I'm sorry, God handed uh, the, the 12 tribes and the land of Israel, their divorce decree, the tribe of Judah, including their divorce decree. And that means that God, he said, because it, it wasn't me who, who, uh, was unfaithful to you no it was you who was unfaithful to me and because of that i've given you uh the divorce decree and because of this what happened next prophecy the prophets of the old from da uh, david uh, daniel um uh ezekiel zechariah all these old prophets who talked about isaiah who talked about the Messiah coming. Guess what? The Messiah did come 2,000 years ago. That was Jesus Christ. And what did he do? What did Jesus Christ fulfill? Okay, he made it to where um, we could have a new marriage. It, 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 he came to propose a new marriage decree between us and our Father God. Do you see what I'm saying? He came to say that if now it's no longer about performing all these rituals and things that I had you do because of your sins. Now I forgive you for your sins so you don't have to do those things anymore. And furthermore, I promise you that if you just accept my son Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is the material version, the, the seeable form of Father Yahweh himself, okay? If we accept and honor Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, okay, that's, that's all it takes. That means we're, we're re-wedded. God is, uh, we are married to God again. We, we become the bride of the lamb. That's what that means. Um, and so, and that's the only way. That, that's, that's, it all makes sense if you consider everything in context, right? And so after Jesus Christ died, rose again, and all that, 
um, he made a way for everyone, everyone of every race to be God's chosen people. You don't have to be Israelite, a descendant of Seth and all the way down to Jesus Christ himself. That's the thing. Jesus Christ himself was descendant. Uh, he was an Israelite all the way from, you know, descendant from Adam and Eve. Uh, he, he, that's the thing you see. And, uh, but, but the 12 tribes of Israel, um, the true tribes, this, okay, I gotta, there's a lot I have to say, but the true 12 tribes of Israel, which were, uh, specifically the Anglo-Saxons, because that's who the, the descendants of Jacob, the 12 tri sons of Jacob, they went on to, to, um, pass over the Caucasus mountains after the deportation of Israel, of the Israelites. Now, this is after uh, Moses has set the Israelites free and from Egyptian slavery. He, he led them, you know, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And then they entered the promised land, which was Jerusalem, Israel. And then because of their sins, hundreds of years later, the deportation occurred. And, because, and that's when the 12 tribes were driven out. They say 10 tribes, and they call them the 10 lost tribes. But in, rea in reality, all 12 tribes were driven out. Just remnants of two or three tribes remain behind. But And this happened around 750 years B.C., before Christ was born. And so the the tribes were scattered. And the Bible tells us they traveled over the Caucasus Mountains, which is where we get our name, Caucasian. Um, and we... And you can follow not only in Bible scripture, but also in, in they, they found evidence. Uh, they found graves of Anglo-Saxons buried in these, re, in these very regions that match this timeline. They found artifacts, all these things for, of us migrating over here. You see, it, it lines up perfectly. But here's the thing. The agenda is uh, the globalists do not want the world to know this because the globalists wants the world to think that they are the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that they are the true uh, 12 tribes of Israel. That's why the Bible calls them the synagogue of Satan, those who say they're Jew but are not, those who are rich but say they're poor. That's that's them, my friends. And th they're in Jerusalem, and and they're summoning the Antichrist, and everyone who's on the, who's on board with the Zionist agenda, you're, you're blind, you're confused, and you're doing nothing but supporting the Antichrist agenda. That's what that is. The false messiah our home is our heavenly kingdom is new jerusalem it's not on this earth our messiah has already come that was two thousand years ago and he's going to return on the seventh trump we're not waiting for him to come for the first time no like these fake jews are so when the, the when their messiah appears they're going to call him the messiah and the whole blinded world's going to believe him but in reality it's going to be the antichrist you see and this has been their whole agenda uh, the antichrist is going to be born through the canaanite bloodline and so it's critical that the whole world believes that the Canaanite bloodline is the true uh, Israelite tribes, you see. Meanwhile, we Anglo-Saxons who are really the true Israelite tribes, who have been scattered and dispersed all over the world until that seventh trump when we reunite in New Jerusalem, right? The globalists want us to think, I'm sorry, wants the world, yeah, us to think that, that we're just nobodies, you know, whoever, just Europeans, whatever. And they want the whole world to think that we're just a bunch of, I'm just going to say it, Chris, crazy Christian fanatic racists or whatever. And um, that's their agenda. They See, all throughout history, because we look a lot alike. Remember, we share the same mother, Adam, uh, uh, Eve. The, the true Anglo-Saxons, white people, our, our father and mother is Adam and Eve, but the Canaanites, their father and mother is Satan, the serpent, and Eve. And so because of that, because of the mother DNA, right, we, we look a lot alike. In fact, in some cases, we look almost exactly alike. So what they do, but they are, they're a cult. They're, they're a family cult, and they're very much against Jesus and true Christians. That's why, and they control all of society. They're, they're the ones behind this globalist agenda. They are the globalists, okay? You know the names. They're a family. They're a cult. They're, they're, they're all Jews, which means they all subscribe to Talmudic Judaism, which is the most anti-Jesus, anti-Christian, anti-freedom religion on the planet. It's, it's very pro-communism. That's what Marxism and Zionism and all that is. It's communism, my friends. It puts the fake Jews at the top. 
And is that not what Bible prophecy says will happen? That's the Antichrist agenda. That's the, that's the new world order, the, the Antichrist democracy rising to the top. And we've witnessed it happening and they're already there. Now all we're waiting is for the Antichrist imposter to appear. But my point, my friends, is <laughs> what does it mean to be a Jew? Holy cow. The Canaanites are not Jews. They're not even related to Jacob. You see, they're of a completely different bloodline, a completely different family tree. It's stemming from Eve, but whoever came, went on, mixed them with, created a whole completely different family tree. In case you haven't noticed, they're part fallen angel and part human. Okay? Whereas the descendants of Seth are pure human, pure blooded, white human as God created us, not hybrids. That's one big difference. So, and we have, because of that, we have two different fathers. Their father is Satan, just like Jesus Christ said. And so they don't hear his voice. They're not going to. And so that's why the agenda has been against us, the true Anglo-Saxons, the true white people all this time. They want to paint us as the evil people of the world so that they can claim victory and, and save the day. And that's what exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to... These, these evil people are making, creating all these evil situations, you know, and so that their Messiah, the Antichrist, can step in and save the day and fool the whole world into uh, worshiping him. That's what all this is leading to, my friends. And, and so it's, what does it mean to be a Jew? Okay, Jesus Christ says there's no longer Jew and Gentile. Now the dividing line, are you a true Christian or are you not a true Christian? That's the dividing line. Now, when it comes to, the, uh, like I said, if you want to be God's chosen people, accept Jesus Christ. It don't matter what race or whatever. But it does matter um, because uh, bloodline still does matter, of course, you know. And there are still descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, the true Israelites alive today. And I'm one of them. I've done my DNA test, I know. Uh, that's not me trying to brag or have a big header. No, it just means that I'm a true descendant of the of Jacob. You see, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and and there's others like me. But but the that's all that means. If I deny Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'll be cast into hell with all the rest of them. That doesn't make I'm any. That doesn't mean that I'm any more special or anything than anyone else. It, it just means that I happen to be related to Adam and Eve, and Seth and Moses, and Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes that Jesus Christ himself is born through, okay? And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, that's something I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm happy about. That's, what an honor, what a great honor. That just gives me more reason to believe that, you know, God is using me, and that I am one of the witnesses that he's called to rise up and, you know, teach during these times. Um, and, and that's Bible prophecy, too, because he describes the 144,000. He also describes the nations. Those are those who are outside of the tribes of Israel. But 144,000 are those of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, they, we play a huge role in these end times. That means that, yes, we are still here and alive, and also we have a mission to do. And it's in the book of God. God. It's in Revelation. It's all throughout Bible Scripture what our job is during these end times and, and why it matters. You see, at the end of the day, God's going to get the last laugh. Satan's agenda this whole time has been to make the Canaanites look like they're God's chosen people and make us and everyone else, the Goyim, we, they call us, Achim, look like trash. You know, we're, we're slaves in their system. God's going to come back and he's going to flip things around the way it should be, the fair, just way, because he's going to put people in charge who are just and fair. And who don't do these evil things that that the who don't have an evil agenda, in other words, and he, you know, he's going to flip things around. And the, of course, the Canaanites, those who say they're Jew but are not, the synagogue of Satan, if they don't accept Jesus Christ, they're going to be cast into the eternal lake of fire. And so that's going to be God fixing things and turning things the way they should be. There's much more to this agenda. There's lots of. <sighs> Holy cow, there's lots of little trails that connect that I've been following for many years. You know, everyone's involved from the CIA to the politics to the media, people who own the, the internet, the, the medical system. You better believe this is a huge 
and very real deal, okay? Um, this cult knows who they are. They know the truth that I'm telling you. That's why they're so desperate to keep it from getting out. And I pray to God they don't take this video down. Save it, okay? Because they might. But that's why they're so desperate to keep the world blinded and confused. Because if the world knew that people like me were the true Jews, were the true Israelites, were the true descendants of, of Jacob, people like me, and people like me are saying that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, not, not you know, the, the Jews today... The Canaanites in Israel, they very they boldly deny Jesus Christ because they think he was an imposter. They're still waiting for the Messiah to come because they denied Jesus Christ. If if the true Israelites were in charge of Israel today, for instance, which I have no desire to be because my home's New Jerusalem in the heavenly kingdom, but if we were, guess what? Jerusalem, Israel would be a Christian nation today. It would not be the communist, socialist, Zionist, Marxist, antichrist nation that it is now it would be a fair democracy a christian fair democracy and america listen to me if if christians were in charge of america like we used to be a long time ago guess what it would be a fair true democracy now a long time ago of course we were messed up we had slavery and all that stuff i'm i'm very much against all that what what can i say but you know if but nowadays, if you put someone like me, in other words, in charge of a nation, it's going to be a Christian, godly nation. It's going to be fair. There's going to be no racism. There's, no, there's going to be none of this junk that we see today, okay? Uh, because there's going to, everyone's going to think, okay? Everyone's going to be on the same freaking page, which is what it takes. If you're, if you're crammed in a box with a bunch of different... You know, if you're an animal and you're crammed in a box with a bunch of animals, wouldn't it be nice if you're all on the same page, not trying to eat each other, but instead you're friends? <laughs> but but what are we seeing? We're seeing snakes shoved in a box with a cat, with a with a freaking you know eagle, with Lord knows what, all sh shoved in this one box. Of course, there's going to be death and chaos, and they're not going to get along. That's the globalist agenda: infiltrate us from the inside, divide, and conquer. But if we do things right the way God and Jesus exemplified, we have a clear line between, okay, this is what we tolerate, this is what we don't tolerate. If you are against this stuff, well, you can go somewhere else. But we're not going to come after you, and we're not going to, you know, force you into whatever, concentration camps or whatever. That's not how that happens. No, it just means that if, you, if you're not on our side and everything, then you, you, you don't have access to the things that, you know, all the rest of us would have all the benefits or what, whatever. In other words, you're not a part of the club. You're not a member of the household. You have come into onto my our property, but you weren't invited. And not only that, we don't want you here because guess what? Um, we don't trust you, and you probably don't trust us either. You see, it just that's just how that works. That's natural. We cannot work around that. And that's how, you know, we, yes, uh, dictatorships and communism and socialism is very bad, but what makes it bad is who's on top. If our King, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is on top making these rules, it's going to be a fair democracy, uh, not a democracy. Uh, it's going to be like a dictatorship, but a fair one, the way it should be. You understand the way it should be with a fair, good King ruling, making fair, true, good rules. And that's what it's going to be like in New Jerusalem. So if you have something against rules, you shouldn't be a true Christian. You know, you're in the wrong crowd. God, the Holy Bible is nothing but rules we must follow in order to, to qualify to even be a true Christian. And when Jesus Christ returns and New Jerusalem is established, you better believe there's going to be rules even there that we have to follow. Of course. But the difference between a good democracy, I'm sorry, a good dictatorship and a bad dictatorship is who's at the top. As long as it's on this world and not New Jerusalem, the Bible warns us that anyone at the top, that's Antichrist, that's false messiah, that's the work of Satan. Because that's how it's going to be on this earth, unfortunately, this sinful fallen earth. That's why this earth is not our home. You see, so we should not fight for any kind of communism, socialism or any of that kind of dictatorship while we're here on earth. No, that's not. That's the opposite. We should be fighting for more freedoms, not less freedoms. 
We don't want government control. We don't want all this government stuff. We want more freedoms. That's what we should be fighting for here on earth, you see. That's why it's really, I could say all these things that I would do if I was in charge, but really I know it's not going to happen because Bible prophecy already told us what's going to happen. And we shouldn't even try to build this kind of empire here on earth because that's in New Jerusalem when, when our king is at the top making these rules. Then it's going to be the way it should be. And yes, it will be a dictatorship, but it's going to be the way it should be. And there will be no complaints, right? But as long as we're on this earth, I, I don't believe that it's even possible to have a fair, true dictatorship, really. That's something that we had to wait for Jesus Christ to do in New Jerusalem. So here on this earth, our thing, yeah, we need, we need democracy. We need true, fair democracy. And in case you haven't noticed and haven't been following me, in 2020, their agenda fulfilled doing away with true democracy in, in, a, in the United States, but also in other places of the world, arguably the whole world. We're, we're now living under systematic global communism. Just waiting for that antichrist imposter. I feel like I've said a lot. I hope I've got my point across. Um, you know, don't get hung up around God's chosen people or Jew or, and not Jew. No, no, no. If you're a true Christian, you're God's chosen people. That's, that's all that matters. Okay. Um... And, and if you if you are uh, hung up around the whole Jew title, you know, like that that matters. Just know that it's not these Canaanite imposters in Israel claiming to be that. But they're the they're the imposters. They're the descendants of Cain. The anti, the synagogue of Satan. That's who they are. Okay. Know that if the title Jew is even still a thing, right? That that specifically describes the tribe of Judah. There's twelve tribes right judah is just one of them and it would necessarily describe some of those of us who have been dispersed the anglo-saxons it's not the imposters um but it, it it's not about being a jew or gentile or whatever you know it's about accepting truth and honoring our lord and savior that's what matters now so yeah that's I, that's my message my friends i'm gonna Stop talking now because I could ramble. Like I said, it's going to be at least a 30-minute video. Try to keep it short, but yeah. All right, God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. I mean it. Have a wonderful day, and God bless you guys always. Thank you.